session online. We welcome our uh, chief guest, keynote speaker, Dr. Karigi Priyama, our administrator, Dr. Baby, and our principal, Dr. R. Lukin. We humbly request the dignitaries and the participants to remain standing until Tamil Thai Barakar is over. We also wholeheartedly welcome all the technical chairpersons of the various departments. We humbly request the dignitaries and the participants to remain standing until Tamil Thai Barakar is over. Time spent in prayer refreshes, renews and strengthens us. So, to commence our conference, I kindly request our college choir to lead us in prayer song. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, His light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. If you're walking through the valley and there are shadows all around, do not fear, He will guide you, He will keep you safe and sound. He has promised to never leave you, or forsake you. And His word is true, God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time, through the darkest night. His light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. All the time. All the time. Thank you, students. Now I would like to invite Sister Madarasi for hope. Let us all bow our heads as Dr. Anita Joyce leads us in prayer. Let us pray. Divine mercy, we humbly come before you, thrones of grace, as we gather for this event. We acknowledge your sovereignty and power, and we invite your Holy Spirit to fill this place, transforming it into a sanctuary of your presence. Lord, as we embark on this journey together, we ask for your divine guidance and protection. May your wisdom and discrement be with the organizers, speakers and participants, ensuring that every decision made and every action taken is aligned with your will and purpose. We pray that this event will be a powerful instrument of your glory, inspiring and uplifting all you attend. Open our hearts and minds to receive the message and lessons you have prepared for us and let your Holy Spirit work within us, empowering us to put our faith into action. Father, we ask that you create an atmosphere of unity, fellowship and love amongst everyone present, present here. Help us to float strong connections and build lasting relationship for all the futurists of your kingdom. As we begin this event, we dedicate every aspect of it to you. May everything we say and do bring honor and glory in your name. And may this gathering be a testament of your love and faithfulness. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you, ma'am. Now I invite our college choir for Tamil Thai Varathu. Parade. 
In seeking the choicest blessings, now I invite Reverend Sister Lalita, Superior General of DMI, to light the lamp. Followed by, we humbly request Reverend Sister Arun Sini, Provincial Center. Reverend Sister Dr. K. Santiago Mary, Correspondent, DFT Group of Institutions. Reverend Sister Dr. Ryan Baby, DMI, Administrator, St. Joseph College of Arts and Science. Put your hands together to light the lamp. Please join your hands to light the lamp, sisters. May I now humbly request our keynote speaker, Dr. Ryan Kanika Priya, Associate Professor and Head, to light the lamp. May I now humbly request Dr. Nelan Nelan Stenna, Director, Quality Control, DFD Group of Institutions to light the lamp. May I now humbly request our beloved principal, Dr. R. Ruben sir, to light the lamp. Thank you, dignitaries. to invite our visionary leader and the esteemed principal, Dr. R. Ruben, to deliver the welcome speech. Bye, bye, bye. Distinguished guests on the stage, delegates and participants, good morning to all. To begin with, I humbly welcome our law almighty to bless and grace this conference with the divine presence of this entire place. I feel extremely glad to welcome everyone. In the name of our Founder Father, Reverend Father Dr. J. E. Arul Raj, with his blessings, all we are here, much awaited international conference on research for sustainable development as the principal of this institution, it is an honor to host such a distinguished event dedicated to the crucial pursuit of sustainable development. Once again, I welcome everyone here on the name of our Reverend Founder Father, Dr. J. A. Arul Raj. It brings me immense joy to welcome our Superior General, Reverend Sister S. Yes, Lalita, for gracing this conference. Reverend Sister S. Yes, Lalita is well known for her unwavering commitment to serving others, has inspired countless individuals. We are truly privileged to have your presence at this conference, Sister. We will heartily welcome you, Sister, for this invitation conference. I am not yet welcome to Reverend Sister L. Arun Sili, Chennai Province, for her endless commitment towards the growth of this congregation and the college and this conference. So we will all heartedly welcome you, Sister, for this conference. And a grateful welcome to our supporting pillar, Reverend Sister Dr. K. Santiago Mary, correspondent, DFP Group of Institutions. Her leadership, dedication, 
commitment towards the development of the society and her valuable guidance are really truly appreciated. We wholeheartedly welcome you, sister, for this international conference. And it is my pleasure to welcome today online chief guest speaker, Dr. Loganathan Veeramuthu, research assistant, professor, Institute of Organic Polymeric Materials for this international conference. Your wisdom and experience will inspire all of us gathered here. We look forward to hear your insight thought out the course of this conference. I am elected to welcome Dr. M. Kanigapriya, our keynote speaker. We eagerly anticipate and the perspectives that you will offer during your address. So we go heartedly to our college and this uh, international conference, madam. Thank you for your presence. It's my great pleasure to welcome our Director, Quality Control, DFT Group of Institutions and eminent leader, Dr. M. L. M. Nolan Livingston for the <laughs> wonderful this international conference, madam. We all utterly welcome. I extend a warm welcome to our guest of honor, Dr. Ananta Narayanan, brings with him a wealth of insight and wisdom that will undoubtedly enrich our conference proceedings. We are privileged to have you join us today as our guest of honor. A grateful welcome to our peer of this college, Reverend Sister Dr. Yam Baby, administrator of this college. Without her support, nothing is clear. Her leadership and dedication towards this program and towards the development of this college is truly appreciated. We wholeheartedly welcome you, Sister, for this international conference. And on behalf of our management, I welcome all the technical session chairs who are participating here. We wholeheartedly welcome all the technical chairs here. <laughs> On behalf of this institution, I am highly obliged to the research scholars and the faculties who have made it to the conference and will be presenting their papers today. These papers will ultimately enlighten as of as present here on the need to save our planet for further generation and future generation. Let us challenge conventional wisdom and date to dream of our world where sustainability is not just a goal but a way of our life. I encourage each of you to actively participate and empower one another to make a tangible difference in our community and beyond. Once again, I extend my heartfelt welcome to all our esteemed guests, speakers and participants. May this conference save, serve as a beacon of hope, innovation and invention as we strive towards the more sustainable and prosperous future to all of us. And finally, I welcome all the heads of the departments of various departments of this college and all the faculty members and student participants in this international conference. Uh, we wholeheartedly welcome everyone for gathering here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And now, it is with great pleasure that we extend our felicitations to our extinct guest. I kindly request our administrator, Reverend Sister Dr. M. Baby to present a shawl to our Superior General, Reverend Sister Lalita. In honor for her presence, I would also like, I will invite our beloved Principal Sir to confer a momentum as a token of our appreciation. Ladies and gentlemen, please be ready for the class. Our Administrator is presenting a shawl and our Principal is presenting a moment. Now, I request Mrs. Krishna Alvin, Head the Department of Business Administration, to present a shawl to our Reverend Sister Arun Sidi, Provincial Chennai, and we also request Ashwita Ma, Head Department of English, to present a moment. Thank you, Sister.
would love to invite Dr. Reyes Vailvali to honor our esteemed correspondent, Reverend Dr. K. Sandhya and Mr. Sabres to present the memento. Sujata to present a shawl with speaker Dr. Kanika Priya. We humbly request Mr. Anand, Dr. Anand Ratsa to give a memento to our beloved keynote speaker Kanika Priya. It is with the great pleasure and honor that I stand before you today as we gather for this esteemed International Conference on Sustainable Development. Esteemed Reverend Sister Amara Arun Sidi, Reverend Sister Dr. K. Sandhya Mary, Dr. L. M. Marilyn Livingston, Honorable Chief Guest, Dr. Loganathan Viramuthu, Keynote speaker, Dr. M. Kanige Priya, guest of honor, Dr. M. Ananda Narayanan, respected administrator, Reverend Sister, Dr. M. Baby, esteemed principal, Dr. R. Ruben, organizers, members of the executive committee, invited guests, delegates, faculties, and participants. It is my honor to extend a warm welcome to each and every one of you. Today, as we gather for this international conference on sustainable development, we are faced with the challenges that require urgent attention and innovative solutions. Issues such as in environmental degradation and climate change are impacting our planet and future generations. This conference serves as a platform for us to collaborate, share knowledge, and take meaningful action towards achieving sustainable development goals. I encourage all of you to actively engage in discussions, exchange ideas, and explore innovative solutions that will contribute to positive change. The pursuit of sustainable development is not only moral imperative, but also a practical necessity for ensuring a prosperous future for all. I would like to express my heartfelt appreciation to St. Joseph College for organizing and hosting this international conference. Your dedication and tireless efforts have provided us with a valuable opportunity to come together and exchange ideas. I am confident that 
this conference will be a productive and enriching experience for all of us. I also wish all the participants, presenters, all the best and wish you all the success. Thank you and I wish you fruitful deliberations and meaningful connections during the course of this conference. Let us pave the way for a brighter and more sustainable future. Thank you once again. Thank you, Sister. Now, it is now the time for the most invited session of our conference. May I now humbly request Reverend Sister Dr. K. Santia Kumeli, correspondent, the group of institution to proclaim the release of the conference proceedings. Good morning. Good morning. So all are sitting so quietly. So let us sit smartly. Okay. Greetings and welcome to all distinguished guests and delegates. It is with great pleasure that we introduce the seven year for this International Conference on Research for Sustainable Development, ICRST 2024. As we address the pressing challenges we face in our planet, this seven year serves as a tangible reminder of our commitment to the advancing sustainable solutions. We hope that this seven year will not only serve as a memento of time together, but also inspire continued action and innovation in the pursuit of sustainable development goals. Special appreciation to the editors and organizers for their tireless dedication and meticulous attention in crafting the conference proceedings. Furthermore, I am thrilled to announce that our conference has seen as an impressive registration of 283 attendees. <laughs> really, it is very appreciable. From this, we have carefully scrutinized and selected the most impactful articles for publication, in which 289 articles published in ISPN peer Re review journal. Among these, over 100 articles have been indexed in Scopus. Really, it is very appreciable. <laughs> and Web of Science and UGC Carlister journals. This achievement underscores the depth of our research presented at this conference. Uh, really, we appreciate the principal, uh, administrator, and all the faculty members, and especially the heads of the departments uh, and the organizers, really, who are taking this effort to publish this journal. Now, this, uh, this day, if you see, um, and everyone is seeking for the publication. Am I right? Everyone is, because in order to upgrade their knowledge in terms of uh, publishing in the, uh, like Web of Science or Scopus or UGC Catalyst. Now this generation at the same time, this needed, because in order to upgrade your knowledge, to enhance and to impart the quality education to the students. Really, I appreciate the principal and all the organizing team members for taking this effort. Once again, I extend my heartfelt gratitude to each and every one of you for your invaluable contributions. May God bless you. Thank you all. Thank you, Sister. May I kindly request Reverend Sister Yes Dalita, Superior General, to step forward and grace us with the release of the conference proceedings. May I also humbly request Dr. Ois Vedolima to please report. It's time to solemnize the unveiling of the conference proceedings. The International Conference of Research for Sustainability Development is an event where researchers, scholars, professors, and academics gather to discuss research and development in a particular field of sustainability. This conference proceeding is a record of abstract papers of the scholars, researchers, and participants published as an edited volume with ISBN 283 papers in the RCR publishers. The 
pen and paper is published in the UGC Care-Listed Journal and Scopus Index Journal with eye impact factors. The selected journals are an endeavor to promote research innovation and new ideas in the fields of commerce, arts and science for journal publication. These are scholarly online open access, peer reviewed interdisciplinary, of yearly and fully referred to journal focusing on theories, methods and applications in varied relevant fields for journal paper publications. Thank you dignitaries for a grand unveiling of their conference proceedings. Thank you dignitaries, thank you now. It is of course a golden feather in the diamond crown of St. Joseph College. Thank you dignitaries, thank you. Now I request Mr. Joshua Sundar Raja, Assistant Professor, Department of English, to introduce our chief guest. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished dignitaries, scholars, academicians, participants, and representatives from various institutions and esteemed colleagues. It is with great pleasure that I stand before you today to introduce our esteemed chief guest, Dr. Lagunavan Virimuthu, Research Assistant Professor, Institute of Organic and Polymeric Materials, Research and Development Center of Smart Textual Technology, National Paper University of Technology, Taiwan. I quote, the best way to predict the future is to create it. I am quote, said by Peter Drucker. Yeah, what Peter Drucker said is right. Dr. Logan Nathan Viramuthu created this future. He sold his research curiosity on 2010 at the University of Madras, Tamil Nadu. That time, Tamil Nadu doesn't know that this seed, Dr. Logan Nathan Viramuthu, will bring the harm to Tamil Nadu. After the completion of his graduation in Tamil Nadu, he moved on to the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research as a project assistant at New Delhi. This seed, Dr. Lobanathan Virumuthu, is strong in his determination to bring harm to India. Yeah, he completed his doctorate and postdoctorate in National Paper University of Technology, Taiwan, where he is appointed as research assistant professor. His journey is marked by remarkable achievements and unwavering dedication to all the academicians. He had published 21 research articles in various journals which are indexed in Scopus, Web of Science, and Thomson Reuters. His contribution to research has not only left an indelible mark on his respective domain, but also impacted communities in profound ways. He is a reviewer in various peer-reviewed journals, and he served as a key speaker around 28 international conferences all over the world. He received around eight awards for his effectual quality contribution to the research from National Paper University of Technology, Taiwan. I quote, success is not about the destination, but the journey to get there. I am quote. This statement is absolutely right. His published research articles and YouTube lectures are truly supportive to many researchers and academicians all over the world. In Google Scholar, his citation score is 704. As I welcome Dr. Loganathan Virimuthu among us today, let us not only acknowledge his accomplishment, but also seize the opportunity to learn from his wisdom and experience. Please join me in extending the warmest of welcomes to our esteemed chief guest, Dr. Loganathan Virimuthu. Thank you, sir. We'll be starting the session in a few minutes.
slideshow mode. Excuse me. Uh, yes, sir. You can proceed, sir. We can able to see you. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yes. Okay. So, hopefully, the slide transitions from here to here. I'm moving my slides. And on my third slide now, four, four, fifth. So if you have any difficulty, please let me know. And we'll, yeah, it's a more use to enter the lecture without um, visual experience. Excuse me, sir, your side, uh, slides are not moving, sir, please, we don't mind this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I just want your feedback. Okay, so I'll try to use the reading mode. I believe this will work. So I'm trying to move my slides now. Yes, sir. We can see your slides, sir. Please. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Very good morning, Dr. Satya. And I'd like to acknowledge all the committee members, especially Dr. Vedavitna for introducing the uh, international conference and all the organizing team members who are voluntarily working together to give this uh, program a successful event for everyone. It's going to be a knowledge chat event, not only we're going to promote your knowledge, that we are going to exchange your knowledge with your teammates or your interdisciplinary colleagues. With. So, yeah, I would like to congratulate all the participants uh, who is engaging in this uh, insightful event. Okay, so uh, I want to thank the uh, yeah, moderator, he is introducing me in such a manner because uh, yeah, I usually do my work up to uh, when I feel like I'm satisfied with it. Okay, so myself, uh, Dr. Lohan here in Utu, I'm working as research assistant professor in National Type University of Technology. Yeah. And today our topic is about promoting transdisciplinary research towards accelerated sustainability tactics. So yeah. Why do we want to talk about sustainability? Okay, before we get into that, I just want to introduce the bit This is the geographical map you can see. This is the Iron map. And in the northernmost map, you can see the secret for Taipei, which is the capital city. And this is uh, the tallest building in Thailand, which is having 101 floor, so they will shortly come to us who are not one. And this is our university campus, and uh, yeah, it is located in the heart of the city, capital city, Taipei. And uh, yeah, it's very convenient to reach out. So if you want to uh, use pay this is our laboratory and for the institutions. So oh, here you can see uh, first of all, I'm going to embarrass you by showing this kind of pictures. Why do I want to show or highlight this kind of pictures to you? Because uh, we should know it has the responsibility because uh, we are just run users. We are just using the technologies and we don't create much. The creators are very less. The users are vast, right? So, yeah, whenever we create some materials or whenever we create some technology, we should also find some solution to clear them or we should know how to recycle them without polluting the environment. So, the pollution, in this thread, you can see how the pollution is transforming our mother earth from green to this thing. Okay, so yeah, there are many pollution, not only just going to pollute the new land, this thing. For example, your soil, your land, or uh, something like you can also pollute your water resources. So the possibility of getting polluted is very high in recent years, especially during COVID pandemic. We used a lot of personal protective equipment, like this mask. And you can imagine how this kind of this mask is going to pollute. The, it's going to occupy your land as well as it's going to pollute your water resources and some creatures like living beings, not only humans, they are many other So yeah, we should know how to recycle. And we should emphasize something called circular. What do you mean by circular? We should know how to process a particular material, for example, some innovative designs, 
which is not going to commit. And for that, we need to rely on some resources. Okay, so natural resources. But it's always not that what you can reach the square property or the performances of your synthetic polymers or synthetic materials. Okay, so that's why we always prefer using some synthetic materials instead of using some natural resources. So, yeah, the ultimate task of our research or internal research uh, or across the globe are not new, okay? I'm featuring everyone. Okay, there are new researchers not only me. So, even the global community is working together to achieve this kind of sustainability and circular economy to avoid some pollution, waste, waste management. Okay, so in this case, you can see how the materials are going to impact and what factors we have to consider if we are going to develop a technology or developing a new product. So, we have to consider about their life cycle analysis or the carbon footprint, their environmental compatibility, their circularity, recyclability, reusability, and how you can renew those resources if you are going to. But uh, yeah, you have to replenish, right? You have to get some outputs. Like, you want some renewable resources. That's what I mean. Okay, so yeah, according to the green chemistry principles. So we should know what all the principles are available. They have framed these kind of principles to get some sustainable outputs. Okay. Major impacts are that it's not going to pollute your environment. So many of the industries are trying to achieve this kind of green chemistry principles. Okay, so we are on the way to achieving this kind of sustainable. Okay. So in this case you can see. There are many different processes. For example, I belong to organic polymeric materials, we prepare materials too. So, yeah, so we have to consider whenever we prepare um, or we are going to synthesize some new materials, then we have to consider about, we have to reduce the number of steps or we have to reduce some toxic reagents or solvents or we should know how to reprocess. Okay. So these are all the things we should consider when we belong to something like material chemist or organic chemist or polymer chemist. So from the manufacturing side, I'm going to talk something like how we can fabricate a device. For example, we know how to prepare some materials, but the problem is after preparing the material, or you have some lot of resources, okay, some natural resources. So we should deploy them in some applications. For example, you want to prepare a device like a phone, okay? So what are the components needed? So we should know the basic principles and what kind of fabrications are available at present, okay? So there are many different fabrication methodology, but at recent years, we are able to see, recent years, we can see a lot of evolution in terms of manufacturing and fabrication technology, especially if you belong to some electrical fabrication or electronic fabrication, then we can think upon some manufacturing. Instead of using some traditional manufacturing in which we will try to go by top approach. Okay, we take some bad material and we fabricate like this. Okay. So what is the other way to obtain this kind of waste and energy? We can do by using some additive manufacturing techniques like 3D printers. And there are some other techniques like road to road process. So, if we can utilize this kind of energy efficient and it's not going to create a lot of waste, so you can avoid your wastage as well as you can control the cost of your application. So, these kind of things are quite important. And we should also think about how we can customize this. Okay, how we can reduce the time management. Okay, the time management is important and the other one is material based and how we can customize them. Okay, I want something like the nano scale or micro scale devices. So we have to engineer them. So for which we need some better solution. So researchers are continuously putting their efforts to bring out some excellent outputs. So again here you can see there are some other techniques like road to road process. So yeah, if you want to prepare a device that major ingredient is your the component is your Electrodes, okay, so how they can fabricate some scalable electrodes. 
we know in the laboratory scale we can prepare some small small scales okay like we can prepare two into two or three into three centimeters but in order to get some bulk production or we want to achieve some good scalability then we have to think about some facility courses especially we consider about using some solution based process why not some baking based process or solid based process because they are highly energy intensive right so in order to avoid that we always prefer using some solution based process methods so this is an another slide in which you can see the in ucs we have recently reported the impact of electronic waste so we use many different electronics and then we dump them and or we try to recycle we go to the support like customer support we give them and we get some payback or we do something right but some of us we don't care we just use and we want some update so we just throw them mobile or we give to someone else and we don't know the exact process what is going on so the management of your process okay it's quite important and we should be able to track our devices okay so that kind of management is necessary to avoid some environmental pollutions and especially this kind of electronic products are made with some conventional rigid materials like some metals okay some toxic elements we are going to pollute your environment so how we can avoid those things we need to manage those based and we try to extract those materials out and we try to listen to so in this article we have proposed some methods to separate some highly valuable materials and in terms of pollution abatement okay for example we want to do for example we want to create some environmental remediation we know a lot of dye molecules we use in our textiles to dye our fabrics to get some vibrant colors but the problem is those dye molecules are going to pollute your water source so what we do we have to remediate those kind of water resources so how we can do by using some catalyst okay which can promote this kind of dye degradation process okay so we have some small basic chemical concepts like oxidation reduction process and we know what is called dye caps and how the electron will get promoted the electron will recombination occurs that's going to generate some radicals like peroxide radicals hydroxyl radicals which is going to react with your dye molecules and degrade them and convert them into some non toxic materials which is not going to pollute the environment so there are many other way okay in terms of electrochemistry in recent years everyone is aware of something called electric currents how the electric currents is going to impact because we know we are using a lot of fossil fuels is going to contribute for the global warming so in order to avoid the greenhouse emission we will use some sustainable resources especially if we want to use some energy we will rely on something like photovoltaics or some other ways to generate the electricity like wind like there are many other ways right so at present many people is focusing on something called hydrogen evolution reaction hydrogen is a fuel okay we are going to use our water resource we know our entire earth is made of water right so water is abundant especially saline water sea water so many people are working on how to design some catalysts which can split your water into hydrogen and oxygen so that you can get some good energy resources so you can use it for many purposes not only for transportation you can use it for many other powering purposes okay so this is again a schematic in which you can see how they are highlighting the impact of renewable energy okay why do you want renewable energy resources so if you are interested please go through this article this one we recently published okay so in this we have discussed everything related to the renewable energy resources and again you can see there are many different harvesting process like we use different resources like light resources or mechanical motions or wave motions magnets or heat we can try to transduce our energy energy can 
we easily transduce into useful energy, right? So anything which is in your opinion is going to waste it. Then we try to utilize some mechanistic ways to consider, okay, in this way we can think of. Okay, so these are the basic mechanisms. Everyone is very well aware of how the photovoltaics work. Okay, the material is going to absorb and it's going to create some electron and hole. It's going to shift. So eventually the electrons can run through your circuit, so you are going to get an output. The same way there are many other ways to generate electricity, not only in the use of the photovoltaics technology. So in recent years, we have we focus on some low mechanical energy harvesting. So whenever your body is going to experience the strain during which you can harvest the case and electrical outputs. So I will get back to this point. Okay, so there are many other ways to avoid the pollution, especially some toxic materials. So this now the tactics in which you can see how the assault waste are going to impact other different resources. And there are many other processing techniques. And in recent years, many people is considering about how we can make our waste into a resource. So we are trying to frame some different techniques. We are proposing different mechanistic ways. So yeah, we can think about all those aspects. Okay, so these are a few examples when we can convert and in recent years, we also focused on something called self learning material, which is going to act as your artificial thing, which is going to mimic your body. Okay, so your electronics, even if it's getting tampered or you can easily do that. Okay, so yeah, this is how we do. So there are many ways to do so. Finally, yeah, there are many other steps to discuss. Maybe in future, if we have any chance, we can discuss. And I want to thank all the organizers and my teammates and my advisor who is uh, instrumental in bringing me up uh, to this level. And I want to suggest you to look into our website if you want to join our university. You can also visit our scholarship pages. And we are my collaborators. I want to acknowledge all of them and my funding resources. And finally, I would like to welcome your suggestions and appreciations. So please scan the QR code, and from this uh, you can get to know and there also run some WhatsApp group and YouTube channel in which I always update some scholarship and research opportunity and some job opportunities because we are in regular places so you can connect with these resources and I'm available in a lot of social media platforms. So yeah, you can follow if you are interested in my research. Okay. So thank you very much for your patience. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 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 Thank you, sir, for your enlightening and thought provoking speech. Your virtual presence has truly enriched our event, and we are grateful for the valuable insights you have shared with us. Now, let's welcome Dr. Rajiv Jodhana to introduce our distinguished keynote speaker. Good morning everyone. On behalf of our management and organizing committee, it is with great pleasure and honor I introduce our keynote speaker for this prestigious international conference on research for sustainable development. Dr. Kanigu Priya stands as a beacon of excellence in the realms of academia, literature, and community engagement. Currently, she was serving as Head Department of English at Sarada Gangadharan College, Puducherry. Her academic journey was distinguished by her persistent pursuit of knowledge and scholarly achievements. She holds an impressive array of degrees, including MA, MPhil, and PhD in English, with a specialization in linguistics and stylistics. With over six years of teaching experience and having acted as a resource person at various esteemed institutions for more than 23 occasions. Dr. Kanika Priya expertise in her field is widely recognized. She has presented over 100 research papers 
and published more than 60 papers alongside over 43 papers in recognized journals. Her profound contributions extend beyond research as she has authored numerous solo books, edited compilations, and co-authored several poetry and anthologies. Dr. Kanika Priya's dedication to fostering academic growth and community outreach is truly commendable. Notably, during the challenging times of COVID-19 pandemic, she conducted free classes for students preparing for higher education entrances and organized online workshops and conferences. She backed various awards such as Kavi Tilagam Award and the Guinness World Record for her editorial work to being appointed as the internal summit deputy country coordinator at the Workplace Skills Development Academy. Today, we are privileged to have Dr. Kanigapriya Graces with her presence as our keynote speaker. Her wealth of knowledge, passion for education, and dedication to excellence serve as an inspiration to us all. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Kanigapriya as we embark on a journey of enlightenment and discovery in this international conference. I welcome Dr. Kanigapriya to deliver the keynote address. Welcome. Good morning. so much uh, for giving a brief introduction about me. Um, actually, uh, none of the points have been missed which I gave you. Uh, these are the things which uh, tells about myself. So I am uh, Dr. Karnik Priya, working at Sardha Gangadharan College, head uh, PG department of English. So when I was uh, uh, discussing about this topic which was given to me for today's uh, discussion, sustainable development, I was questioning uh, in, wa in what way I can uh, give a talk related to this because I am from a literature background and uh, some way I thought like I can connect with, uh, uh, I mean sustainable development with that of a stylistics. So giving you an impact related to literature with that of sustainable development. So actually, uh, initially and all we come across when we talk about the environment, uh, environmental awareness, uh, we come to know uh, from a literature perspective, we call it as eco-criticism. And uh, in order to have a touch with the environmental side and in order to protect nature and all, uh, nowadays uh, sustainable development goals have been introduced in various terms and uh, I'm going to relate that with that of literature and uh, hope by this uh, end of the discussion you will get a um, new idea or a great impact on uh, research uh, regarding stylistics with that of sustainable development. So initially, uh, first of all I want to introduce what is stylistics. Uh, it is a new term uh, maybe for many people. Um, I just uh, want to do this uh, analysis from that of uh, novel, poem and uh, drama. Actually when you take this research, um, a poem, uh, in poetry many people have done research but considering novel and drama it is limited. Uh, none of the people have uh, dared to take stylistics at all. So uh, this particular session I hope you will get a serious uh, knowledge regarding what is stylistics and I'll uh, just like that I'll connect stylistics with that of sustainable development uh, when I am going to choose a novel which is going to give a give you an awareness regarding environmental side okay so first of all we'll go with the side slide yes uh, so first of all you have to know what is stylistics right so style versus stylistics uh, 
what it shows is uh, the style of the writer it can be novel it can be poem it can be drama and whatever style the writer chooses in order to give their writing is called to be stylistics uh, in various way they project stylistics actually uh, when we talk this uh, particular topic uh, i just want you to uh, get into a novel which is called to be inheritance of loss actually uh, first of all i am going to talk about uh, indian literature novels um, when we talk about indian literature novels uh, there are many novelists you can see uh, particularly i have chosen only women writers among women writers uh, i am going to talk about kiran desai who have uh, given us a beautiful novel which is called to be inheritance of loss which was published in the year 2006 and uh, uh, this is a, a well known book though uh, you are not aware of that you can go and search uh, which talks about uh, eco criticism which is related to our uh, uh, conference today sustainable development uh, she has talked about uh, post colonialism feminism actually she is not a feminist writer but when we take uh, this novel from a research perspective uh, we can see this novel from a feministic perspective also okay so uh, first of all as uh, uh, we talk about the style or stylistics the stylistic technique right so here when we analyze a novel what is the most important thing is point of view uh, first person point of view second person point of view third person point of view you would have read many novels but uh, i hope uh, you have never uh, analyzed a novel from a stylistic point of view for that perspective only today i have uh, i am going to relate with that of today's conference topic so when we are uh, analyzing this uh, it is easy to analyze in from a poem right like uh, allusion figures of speech uh, you can connect with simile metaphors and all but uh, mm. when we consider novel it is really tough so the first thing the first slide you can change the slide move forward actually stylistics is actually a branch of linguistics so linguistics is like a tree uh, from that we get this branch and uh, uh, we are going to do this uh, in the text so when we talk about the need of stylistics is nothing but in order to get a detailed analysis in order to know what the writer have written so this is what i told you when you analyze a novel you have to uh, do it from two things one is uh, uh, narrative techno uh, technique narrative technique is nothing but the detail analysis the other one is uh, uh, identifying uh, identifying the novel from point of view you can move the slide yeah <laughs> so when we consider the technique or the storytelling point uh, point what is more important is uh the narrative way it should not bore the readers right so such a way the writer should write actually uh, as i don't have much time i was thinking to uh, give a discussion for one hour but uh, i was restrained to talk within 10 to 15 minutes that's what i'm moving the slides actually i have prepared 98 slides but uh, due to time constraints i am moving to the straight point okay move it so this is what i told you like uh, a point of view is nothing but first person first person is nothing but pronoun of i whereas second person is you uh, where the reader is uh, uh, indicated with that of uh, uh, the protagonist whereas third person is nothing but the uh, writer himself as a omnipresent narrator he is connecting with the reader so here why does the novel is uh, given to us is in order to create suspense in order to uh, give irony uh, twist and so much of things to be there but here in this particular novel what i am going to discuss uh, as i told you with that of uh, change um uh, as i told you it is going to be indian english novel and uh, though there are many english novelists i am going to choose only one novelist who is called to be 
uh, Kiran Desai, right? So, change it, change it. You can do, yeah, these many women writers are there and particularly I'm going to choose Kiran Desai. She is Kiran Desai. She is given us a beautiful novel which is called to be Inheritance of Law. So, so many novels in this particular novel which I have chosen is that blue color which is uh, Inheritance of Law. Yeah. So, these are the things which I thought to be discussing today. Eco-criticism, globalization, multiculturalism and feminism. Uh, but due to time constraint, in order to stick to the topic, I am sticking with uh, eco-criticism alone. So, what is eco-criticism is? Here, uh, in order to analyze this from stylistic point of view, uh, these are the techniques which uh, the writer have chosen. Like uh, use of words, like uh, in order to catchy words. Uh, for example, like honomatopoeia, it's nothing but sound effect, phonology. Uh, in order to read, you will uh, listen to some sounds. For example, uh, the ringing of bell, ringing of uh, telephone bell, cring cring. So you can, while you read itself, you can listen to the sound. So such a style uh, is influenced in the uh, novels. So that is what you can see here, along with simile images, uh, even for example, the cluttering sound, uh, the frog sounds. So animal, uh, animalistic touch is given here. So when we talk about this naturalistic touch or uh, environmental side, uh, you can see um, both nature versus man and uh, how nature is connected with man as well as how animals are connected with man. So uh, in each and everything rather than reading it as a story we can read this from a stylistic point of view. You can move uh, with uh, eco -critic. Yeah, This is the topic which I thought to discuss with you. So here some characters have been introduced in such a way uh, in order to connect with eco -criticism. So here you can see a sentence like uh, natural beauty of Mount Kanchenjunga with bizarre prosperousness. So the terms, such usage of terms that is called to be stylistics. So such uh, bizarre in the sense like uh, in such a way giving you a uh, insight into environmental side. So sustainable development in order to preserve nature, uh, the writer, uh, just like that if you read you will never get that idea. So when you find such words in the literature, you will really know uh, that in future you have to sustain the nature. So uh, further with that you can see lot of uh, uh, stylistic points like clipped words, mountain side. Uh, even capital letters, usage of capital letters. While you read each and every sentence in this book, you can find the sort of stylistic way. Like, hello, hello. Rather than using small letters, the writer is using capital letters in order to show her own style, her own unique way of uh, stylistics. Yes? You can move. Here you can see the dog name, which is um, uh, called as Mutt. But how does the writer is using it is with uh, both combination of small letters with that of a capital letters in such a way the human being is in search of uh, his own uh, pet animal and uh, in order to stress the search in order to show the emotion towards man versus uh, the pet. Here the naturalistic touch is given in a much unique way. So this is how uh, eco-criticism uh, is used in this uh, particular novel. So uh, now we'll move with uh, poetry, uh, which will uh, clearly give you what a stylistic. You can move forward. Move with poetry. Actually, these are the things I thought to talk, but uh, when it is uh, time constraints, I am leaving all these things. Uh, in order to analyze poem from that of a stylistic point of view, uh, 
uh, you can see uh, pattern says right word in the right place. So you have to uh, fix a word in a right place which will give you a, a right sentence and that shows your style. Actually here uh, when we talk about poem, uh, when we want to analyze poem from a stylistic point of view, two things to be uh, noted. Uh, what is that is poetic license. So the writer says that he or she has poetic license uh, telling that uh, this is my own style. So here I am uh, I'm going to cite some of the examples for you uh, as that of a conclusion part. Yes. can see. So right word in the right place. So if you want to tell Amma, it should be Amma. Right? A Imma. If you replace the letters, it will never give you meaning. So style is this is what. So at A P T. It's a combination of three letters. When you uh, fix it in a uh, correct manner, that is said to be stylistic. Mm -hmm. So uh, here uh, one more example is in uh, uh, Buffalo Bill poem, you can see letters are stuck together, one, two, three, without a gap. So such a thing, when you notice a, such thing in a novel, poem or something like that, you just like that, it should strike you that it uh, tend to be a stylistic. Yes. Move, move. Yes. So here, uh, poem is nothing but stanzas, right? So stanza division, punctuation, capitalization, these are the things you have to uh, check. So here you can see pregnant. So without even reading the whole text, the heading itself will give you an uh, insight of what the whole content is. Right? So G, which shows the graph of a pregnant lady. Yes. So here you can see a Q poem where the letters stand to be in Q. Rather than making you to stand in a Q, uh, the writer is making the letters to stand in a queue and showing you that it is about queue poem, right? Yes. And uh, uh, you can see here the brook poem where uh, short vowels are used in order to show the life of uh, eternity. Like our life is very short. Dr. M. Baby and uh, the conference coordinator Dr. R. Ruben, 
principal uh, all the conveners and co conveners i can see the real unity of the whole college here in con uh, organizing such a beautiful conference i never seen such unity elsewhere really all the departments are united here uh, in organizing a single conference so thank you so much uh, for inviting me for this uh, conference thank you all Thank you, ma'am, for your captivating address. Your participation today has deeply enriched our event. Now, I humbly request Dr. Anand Raj to introduce the technical chairs. Good morning to one and all present here. I feel immense pleasure to invite all the technical chairpersons, distinguished guests, and esteemed delegates for the International Conference on Research for Sustainable Development. As we gather here from the different corners of the globe, we are united by a common purpose, the pursuit of knowledge, collaboration, and progress. This conference serves as a platform for the exchange of ideas, insights, and innovations. I wholeheartedly introduce our distinguished chairperson, Dr. V. J. Chakravarti, Professor, Department of Computer Application, Dr. MGR Educational and Research Institute, Mother Royal Chennai. Our chief guest is not just a figure of influence, but a visionary leader whose contribution left an incredible mark on the field of expertise. He has, he has got 20 years of teaching experience. He has published 52 international journals and got seven patents. He has received many national and international awards for teaching excellence in higher education. I would like to introduce our esteemed chairperson, Dr. V. Ganesan, Associate Professor, Department of English, Jane Jane College, Chennai. He has got 30 years of teaching experience. He has published 62 research papers, both in national and international level. He has translated many books and poems. He has received a Lifetime Achievement Award from the American Association. Next, I would like to introduce our eminent chairperson, Dr. K. Shanti, Dean, School of Humanities, and Head Department of Social Work, Gurnana College, Chennai. She has 10 years of teaching experience. She has presented 36 international publications, and she is the author of two books. She is the life member of Indian Society of Social Work. I would like to introduce our untiring chairperson, Dr. D. J. Prakash, Head in Charge, Department of Accounting and Finance, D.G. Vaishnava College, Chennai. He has got 12 years of teaching experience. He has presented 15 international publications and he is a lifetime member of Indian Academic Research Association. I'd like to introduce our renowned chairperson, Dr. Yang Tenmuri, Associate Professor, Department of Biotechnology, School of Life Science, World Institute of Science and Technology, Chennai. She has 10 years of teaching experience. She has 42 international journals, two books, and received two patents. She has received a Young Scientist Award for learning specific techniques for sustainable development in the environment. It is my sincere belief that the individuals who have graciously accepted the responsibility of serving as a chairperson for this international conference. Thank you all. Now it's time to felicitate our chairpersons. May I humbly request Reverend Sister Yes Lalita, Superior General of DMI, to felicitate our chairpersons. May I humbly request Dr. K. Shanti, Dean, School of Humanities, Head, Department of Social Work, Guru Nanak College. We request our sister to felicitate with our momentum. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a big round of applause to Dr. K. Shanti, Dean, School of Humanities, Head, Department of Social Work, Guru Nanak College, Vilachari, Chennai. She is the chairperson for social work law on this bond in our college today. She is accompanied by our Reverend Sister Administrator and our beloved principals. Thank you, dignitaries. May I humbly request Dr. V. Ganesan, sir, Assistant Professor, A.M. Jain College. We request our Reverend Sister Lalita, Superior General, to felicitate Dr. V. Ganeshan, sir, Associate Professor A.M. Jain College, accompanied by our beloved Administrator and Principal, sir. Thank you, sir. May I now request Dr. V. J. Chakravarti, sir, Professor, Dr. NGR Educational and Research Institute, Chennai. We request Reverend Sister Lalita. 
to Pirit Central Sister to felicitate. We humbly request Dr. D. Jaya Prakash, Head and in Charge, Assistant Professor, D.G. Vaishnava College, Alam Bakar, for proceeding as a chairperson in Commerce and Management. Dr. D. Jaya Prakash, Head and in Charge, Assistant Professor, D.G. Vaishnava College. He is a chair for Commerce and Management. Thank you, sir. Now I request Dr. Ian Tengnuri, Assistant Professor, Wales Vistas, Pagavaram Chennai. She will be the chairperson for the Department of Biotechnology. Thank you, sister. Thank you, dignitaries. Thank you, admin. Sister, thank you, principal, sir. We have come to the end of the inaugural session. So I invite Dr. K. Priya, to the river of the house. A warm greeting to one and all. On behalf of the organizing committee of the International Conference on Research for Sustainable Development, I extend my heartfelt gratitude to everyone who contributed the success of this inaugural session. First and foremost, I would like to express our deepest gratitude to the Lord Almighty for his blessings and guidance throughout this endeavor. We are immensely grateful to our founder, Reverend Father Dr. J.E. Arunraj, who has been offering magnanimous support and guidance in all academic pursuits as well as his leadership in promoting research activities. We are honored to have Reverend Sister S. Lalita, Superior General of DMI, who has delivered the presidential address and released the conference proceedings. Our insightful words and contributions have been invaluable. Thank you very much, Sister. I would like to extend my sincere thanks to all the esteemed guests of honor who graced us with their presence, Reverend Sister Dr. K. Santiago Mary, correspondent of DFT Group of Colleges, and Dr. L. M. Merling Livingston, Director of Quality Control of DFT Group of Colleges, Reverend Sister Arul Sili, Provincial Chennai. Your presence and contributions have added immense value to our conference, and we are greatly uh, deepful for your support and participation. Thank you, sister. <laughs> A special thanks to Dr. R. Rubel, principal, and Reverend Sister M. Baby, administrator, for their continuous support and encouragement. Our heartfelt thanks to our esteemed chief guest, Dr. Loganathan Veeramuthu, and vibrant keynote speaker, Dr. M. Kanigapriya, for sharing their expertise and knowledge with us. Thank you very much. We are much enlightened with our presentations. I would also like to extend our grateful thanks to all the session chairs, Dr. B. Ganesan, Dr. K. Shanti, Dr. B. J. Chakravarti, Dr. J. Jayaprakash, Dr. M. Tenmuri, who are awaiting to provide their guidance and moderation for smooth conduct of all the technical sessions. We thank you very much, sir. A big thanks to all the faculty members for their unwavering support and dedication. Your contribution have been instrumental in making this conference a grand success. Last but not least, I want to express my sincere appreciation to all the awaiting enthusiastic presenters and participants for their active and involvement and contribution. I once again thank you very much for each and everyone for making this inaugural session a grand success. Thank you all. Thank you, ma'am. We have the first speaking chairs for the photo session, please. One, two, four, four.
Thank you, dignitaries. Thank you. Participants, you can have your free break there. Please be there in room number six and seven. Participants, NSS volunteers, please guide the participants for the free break session. After the break, you can move to your respective allotted rooms for your session.